Professor Stefan Schug is the editor of the fourth edition of the world-renowned Pain Treatment Guide. It's just come out today. Congratulations. The Acute Pain Management Scientific Evidence, 700 pages. How are you feeling? Yeah, very relieved. This was a very hard work, not only of me, but of the working group and all the contributors. So there were many, many people involved. But it was really very hard work to get this together. How long have you been pulling the fourth edition together? I mean, overall, we started pretty exactly two years before the release date. And of these 18 months were intense work. I am grateful that my university, the University of Western Australia, gave me nine months of a sabbatical because otherwise it would have been impossible to do this. How are you feeling now? A little exhausted? Very relieved <laughs> that it is all out, very happy and it's quite coincidental that today when we launched the book at the same time today appeared a, a paper in the Medical Journal of Australia describing the document. Fantastic. What aims and hopes have you for the publication? Yeah, I mean, I have now worked in pain medicine for 30 years and my main aim has always been to try to make the life of our patients better, relieve pain, uh, reduce suffering and I hope that the more scientific evidence we can now present, the better our colleagues will be in applying the scientific evidence and thereby helping patients to get out of surgery with less pain and in particular the new major interest preventing chronic pain after surgery. Is that sometimes underestimated, the, the, the pain in some patients? I think both things are underestimated, as well the severity and incidence of acute pain and what that does to people in the post-operative period with regard to reducing mobilization, impairing rehabilitation, extending hospital stay and possibly even increasing morbidity and mortality. But also completely underestimated is the pain which develops in the months after surgery where new data are saying that possibly on average 7 to 10 percent of patients who have an operation will have a pain after the operation. Any reasons that you've discovered for that or starting to understand? I mean the main, main reason is most likely nerve injury leading to then neuropathic or nerve pain. That seems to be from the operation the main reason and that doesn't mean surgeons are doing stupid things but that simply whenever you operate on somebody you are cutting nerves and when you cut nerves you can get in a certain percentage of people an, uh, an e effect which uh, then results in chronic nerve pain. But it's interesting in this context that there are also psychological factors. So patients who are more catastrophizing, are more depressed, have problems with their mood, are at a higher risk of developing chronic pain after surgery than other patients and that is clearly in line with what the Faculty of Pain Medicine is pushing so hard that pain is not only biomedical but a socio-psychological biomedical phenomenon. So it's that expression it's all in the mind sometimes. Um, how can you do further work on studying that? I mean A, all in the mind is in principle all pain is only in the brain because what we perceive or what happens in our body is action potentials and what happens in the brain is that these action potentials are then interpreted as pain. So it's a little bit something which a lot of people say, oh, it's only in your mind, but if we really carefully think, then pain is a subjective experience which happens in the brain of the patient and nowhere else. What one can do about it, these are the interesting questions. At the moment we are looking at uh, prevention by certain analgesic techniques. For example, continuous regional anesthesia. There are very good data to say this suppresses chronic pain after surgery and possibly or very likely ketamine. And there's actually a lot of research currently going on among members of the college with regard to trying to see what ketamine really does for prevention of uh, chronic pain. Is that um, because you've discussed this in, in the publication, the regional blocks are sometimes better to use than the conventional pain relief? 
I mean, there is clearly a worldwide trend to use multimodal analgesia, meaning instead of giving a patient only morphine, and if they have more pain, more morphine, use a variety of techniques and drugs with different mechanism or side of action. And in this context, regional techniques of pain relief have become in, in, uh, increasingly popular. And reasons are, among other things, that they cause very little systemic side effects. So patients are not sedated, not drowsy, not vomiting. That the pain relief is very good. And that with the modern techniques of inserting catheters besides nerve, we can actually extend the efficacy long into the post-operative period. Something else in the guide, uh, you cover the scientific evidence about other kinds of pain and not just surgery, so burns, etc. Correct. This document, which is a fourth edition of a document which was started by Michael Cousins in 1999 and subsequent editions in 2005 and 2010 were made by a, a working group chaired by uh, Professor Pam McIntyre from Adelaide is now in its fourth edition and all these editions have always not only looked at post-operative pain but also at acute pain related to diseases, for example cancer, acute pain related to uh, trauma like burns and, and all conditions where acute pain can occur. How do you think the guide will help the medical profession and patients ultimately? I mean, the intention of this guide is really not so much to provide guidelines. It is actually deliberately not a guideline, but a summary of the available evidence. And what we hope is that people take this evidence and then apply this evidence to their own hospital guidelines. And I've just come back from uh, Germany last week, where the German anesthesia and surgical society are looking at new guidelines and want to use our document as a basis and this is also not only happening in Germany this is a document which is endorsed worldwide by many many organizations in the UK all over Asia but even the International Association for the Study of Pain and the European Society of Regional Anesthesia and Pain Medicine so my hope is that many people use this and that why is why it is freely available. You can, everybody can download it as a PDF from the college website so we don't put a fee or anything on it. The only thing is if you want to get the book then you have to contribute to the printing costs. Now the book's out today, it's been published today. You haven't even seen the hard copy yourself I have you? A hard copy <laughs> just got now in my bag here. Yeah. What's the reaction been so far? Yeah, I mean, the reaction has been really good. We had interest from the press. There were uh, a number of uh, n newspaper articles, like in the Australian, describing it. And as I said, because a PDF is already out since December, I've already actually been in multiple countries using this document to guide other countries' initiatives to improve acute pain management. Well, congratulations. It's quite an achievement. You can relax now. Uh, enjoy the rest of the ANSCA ASM and thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you very much for talking to me.